Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at problems on single phase semiconverter. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the first problem. The single phase semiconverter is operated from 120 volt 50 hertz AC supply. So the given data, let's make a note of the given data. 120 volt 50 hertz supply. The load resistance R is given as 10 ohms. If the average output voltage is 25% of the maximum possible average output voltage, determine the firing angle RMS and average output current. So they've also given that the average output voltage is equal to 0.25 times the maximum output average output voltage. So, in order to find the firing angle, so let's change the color here. So, in order to find the firing angle, so this is clear that this is a semi-converter with R load because they have not given any data with respect to inductance that is clear that it's an R load. So, in general, we know that the expression that is V out DC is given by Vm by pi into 1 plus cos alpha, isn't it? So V out DC, can we rewrite it as 0.25 times this V out max is nothing but Vm by pi into 1 plus cos alpha. Cos alpha, maximum average output voltage will be achieved when alpha is equal to 0. So when we substitute alpha is equal to 0, you'll be getting 1. So this will be equal to V out DC equal to 0.25 into 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 into Vm value is nothing but 120. Remember, you have to multiply it with root 2 divided by pi. So always whatever value they have given to consider the maximum amplitude, we have to multiply it with root 2. So you will be getting V out DC to be equal to 27 volt. Now we have found out V out DC. Isn't it straightforward to find out the firing angle from this one? So now in order to find out the firing angle, that is again from this particular expression, V out DC, rewriting it again, root 2 into Vm is nothing but 120 divided by pi into 1 plus cos alpha. So we have to find the alpha value here. 27 is equal to root 2 into 120 divided by pi into 1 plus cos alpha. Substituting and simplifying this, you will be getting alpha is equal to 120 degrees. So the first portion of the problem is completed. Now we have to find the RMS and average output current. So how do we find that? So first, let us find the average output current. Average output current. So since this is an R load, average output current is nothing but V out average by R. So that is nothing but 27 by 10. You will be getting 2.7 amps. And the RMS output current can be found by RMS output current can be found by I out RMS is equal to V out RMS by R. Now we had derived the expression previously during the analysis of semiconverter. So V out RMS is nothing but Vm by root 2 pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 whole root. V out RMS is equal to 120 into root 2 for Vm divided by root 2 pi into, remember the mistake that commonly is done by students is 
we know alpha is equal to 120 so we need to convert this by multiplying it with pi by 180 so that all of them are in the same terms that is in radians otherwise you can do it vice versa by considering everything in degree but this is the most easy easiest method that you can follow plus sine of 240 by 2 whole root Substit substituting and solving this you will be getting v out rms is equal to 53.05 old which implies i out rms is equal to v out rms by r that is 10 you will be getting 5.305 amps i hope this problem is clear now let's make a move on here. Let's solve the next problem that is given to us. So the second problem states a single phase semiconverter is operated from again 120 volt, 50 hertz supply. 120 volt, 50 hertz, 50, 50 hertz AC supply. The load current with an average value IDC is continuous and ripple free firing angle alpha is equal to pi by six. They've given the firing angle as well. And they're indirectly hinting us that the load current is continuous and ripple free, meaning to say that they have an inductor and it's a large value that is chosen and it is continuous mode of operation. So this is an RL load. So determine the displacement factor, harmonic factor and input power factor. So similar type of a problem can be approached in a different way, which I will be doing in the next problem. But how to approach this problem? First, we will consider the displacement factor that is to be found out. Displacement factor, by definition, it is given as cos of alpha by 2. When they are not seeing anything, that means it is fundamental displacement factor. So cos n alpha by 2 is nothing but n is equal to 1. So cos alpha by 2, that is 0 0.9659 in this case. Now they are asking for harmonic factor. In our Fourier analysis, we had derived the expression for total harmonic distortion. So total harmonic distortion can also be called as harmonic factor. So don't get confused by it. So THD is generally given as THD is generally given as square root of it can be found out by IRMS by IRMS one whole square minus one. Now we need IRMS and IRMS1, isn't it? So how do we find the value of IRMS? IRMS is equal to I out. So this expression we had seen while performing Fourier analysis, isn't it? Pi minus alpha by pi. So you will be getting 0.91 times of I naught. And IRMS1, we know IRMS1 expression is 2 root 2 times i naught whole divided by pi into cos of alpha by 2. So IRMS1 is nothing but equal to 0.869 times i naught. So substituting these two values, you will be getting harmonic factor or total harmonic distortion to be equal to 30.8% if you're multiplying in terms of percentage with respect to 100 you'll be getting harmonic factor to be equal to 30.8 so in our Fourier analysis we have directly obtained the final expression for harmonic factor or total harmonic distortion that is another way of solving and this is another approach of solving this type of problem now let's take a look at the input power factor input power factor so let's consider C, that is nothing but the power factor. Power factor is given as the ratio of IRMS1 by IRMS into cos of N alpha by 2, that is in general it is alpha by 2 here. So you will be getting 0.922. And very, very important point is you have to mention as lagging. Power factor without any mentions clearly indicates it's not having any meaning 
So in this case, it's an RL load. Inductive load means we will represent it as lagging. So this is a very, very important point that you need to consider. So this is how we approach this problem. Similarly, we will be looking at another problem, which is having similar sort of inputs, but we will be solving it in a different way. Again, writing the given data, a single phase semi-converter operated as 120 volt, 60 hertz supply in this case. The load current with an average value of IDC is continuous and ripple free and alpha is equal to pi by six. So this is similar to previous one. You can solve it by the method that we followed previously, or you can also do it by direct substitution of the formulas that we use during Fourier analysis. So first step is to find the harmonic factor. Harmonic factor or total harmonic distortion. So we know from the Fourier analysis, the expression for harmonic factor or total harmonic distortion is given by square root of pi into pi minus alpha by 8 cos square alpha by 2 minus 1. If you remember this expression, then you can directly go with this method. Substituting, you will be getting 31.08%. Now, what's the second one that we have to find? Displacement factor. Displacement factor is given as cos alpha by 2. So, we will be getting 0 0.866. Next, we have to find out the power factor. So power factor can be found out by the formula square root of 8 by pi into pi minus alpha cos square alpha by 2. Substituting and solving, you will be getting 0.827. Again, it is lagging power factor because it's an RL load. So if you remember the formula, this is one method. If you don't remember the formula, then you can follow the previous method. However, you will be arriving at the same values by solving by any of the methods. So I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of how to approach problems on semi-converters. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. We'll meet you guys in another video. Thank you.